This is Twit. Big layoffs, lots of uh, brain drain going on. Elon not looking too serious, although I note, you know, in the first few days after he bought Twitter, he tweeted three or four times at the norm his normal rate. He's really dropped off a lot, and most of his tweets have nothing to do with Twitter all of a sudden. Although he did tweet on Friday that all of this excitement has really increased engagement on Twitter. Uh, he said, well, it's really improved <laughs> the number of, of posts on Twitter, which may be true. I don't know. Um, sounds a little like, uh, you know, he protests too much. Hmm. Yeah, they're doing so well that he sold another $4 billion of Tesla stock to cover the losses. Yeah. So, yeah, that sounds like it's... I mean, the, big, the real problem for Twitter, if let's say they get past the FTC and a, a pissed off senator... Uh, the real problem is that advertisers don't want to be anywhere near this, right? That's the. That's did the, you see he threatened the advertisers? Yeah, yeah. He said, he's going to uh, charge them more <laughs> for for being cowards. Oh my gosh, that's that's an episode from that uh, go, Sunset Strip show. Yeah, yeah. he goes. He was going to say he was going to go thermonuclear name and mm -hmm. shame if they cut off their advertising. Uh, that's a well, guarantee that well, advertisers are going to. What are you the trying platform. to do? Who talks to their customers that way? He's he <laughs> is in effect telling advertisers, "I am a loose cannon, and I can hurt your I, brand." I don't time. think that's what right. he's doing. I I honestly don't think. I, I think what he's doing is creating a situation. So, if any of you out there are have employees, think about the process that you would use to get rid of an employee who's underperforming. You can't just fire them. It, you know, I guess unless no, you're you Twitter. write them up, um, you, you create a paper. You have trail. to go through a process yeah. where you either. I mean, some companies sort of make the circumstances such that they want to quit, right? Or you you have a, a whole long process of write-ups and things like that. Is it plausible that given the weight of the investment and the total improbability that any any current financial model works out to pay that back, that he's creating the circumstance where there is no alternative but bankruptcy so that he gets out of this whole thing and Twitter dies permanently? That would be my take, my hot take. So there was talk that he wasn't uh, that bankruptcy was, uh, I think, a possible option. He said he told. It I think it is. It is the only option. I there it's is, inevitable. But he there, said this. You know, the turning it into a payment he, platform doesn't make sense when there's this plenty make of sense. You buy something and then you file for bankruptcy. No, 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 I don't think that's why he did it. I think he was. Listen, I mean, again, let's go back in time. I think this started out as a probably overconfident ruse that turned into what felt like a real thing. I mean, we're kind of seeing this pattern over and over again with powerful men, right? Um, and then it kind of became real and there was no way to walk things back. And this seems to be the only way for him to get out of it at this point. It's not a really good way to get out of it, though, because I mean, it is the only way to get out of, of it. His he did, yeah, but he didn't want to be in it. The problem was there was no way to get out without a lawsuit. Yeah, he was, uh, it's, it's apparently, I, I agree with you, Amy, that the original uh, decision to buy Twitter was either a joke or I don't think it was a out. joke. I mean, I think that there's a certain amount of highfalutin Hubris. bloviating that's yeah. happening right yeah, now. Yeah, bloviatings. Among our, our tech oligarchs who are running the show yeah. all over the place. And this was kind of like, he was shown know, He was showing his tail feathers. A little um, bit, yeah. And then realized and then it kind of got real. Idea, and there was and no way to back get, out, to get of out of it, it, back out of it without a lawsuit. Do you think he which thought was, which he... was the whole like all of Twitter is bots? Prove to me they're not. This is a reason right. for me. Mm -hmm. I've got grounds to not go through with the sale. Do you think he always thought, well, I can always get out of it? Um, yeah, I think it. I think that again, that I would call them the sort of tech oligarchs think that they can get in or out of anything. Yeah. I think that's part of how we got to now. Yeah. Uh, and then, for some reason, really feared what was going to happen in the Delaware Court of Chancery. He was about to be deposed. They had already revealed some embarrassing direct messages. Um, probably he knew of others that were to come. I'm wondering if he had some conversations with Mudge, Peter Zatko, the Twitter whistleblower at some point mm -hmm. that might have been incriminating. So all, for some reason, which we don't fully know, he decided, oh, I guess I have to buy it. Do you think at that point he starts squirming and looking for yes. ways? Yes. So he put in of his own money, uh, I don't know, somewhere around thirty billion. He borrowed. Was 30 it? I thought it was like I thought he put up the money, but I thought the real amount was closer to a billion. Was it that much? Really? Oh, you no, know, it was he, a lot. It was way. way it was more, more than that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So he got thir He borrowed thirteen, I think, billion from banks. Mm. Those guys cannot be very happy at this point. 
um, they're really exposed. They were um, re they were really foolish for going in well, on this. It was a mistake, right? Uh, but he also got money from Larry Ellison, kicked in a couple of bill. Uh, the so Saudi sovereign fund, we yeah. don't know how much, but a lot. So you're right. Elon might not have been in for more than a, a 13 or 14 billion. Um, if he declares bankruptcy, would it be it would chapter 11 reorganization? Is that what you think? Does he then get to put off the creditors? He's got a more than a billion dollar yearly annual uh, interest. So again, billion. I think this is one of these things where if everybody, if the Saudi royal, you know, the, the Saudi sovereign wealth fund still wants to go out and, and have, I guess, not a beer, but but some type of non-alcoholic drink and sit around a bar because Elon's cool, then everything is copacetic. I just don't think that's going to happen. I think he is actually stuck. I think he's actually stuck. And the worse that the situation gets, the worse this becomes for his other holdings from the other companies and their market cap. I, this is a cascading Tesla's, Tesla's um, cycle already, of apocalyptic hell. Let me ask you a question, Amy. Of, Do you yeah. think that these, because I was just thinking about the sheer number of people that were let go. Mm -hmm. I'm like, what other company could function if they just one day well, got rid of half of their employees? And I'm talking yeah. uh, any any company over a thousand employees. Like, how do you function if half of your employees are gone? And summarily, and, and, right? Without a lot and there of- there weren't that many to start. They only had, what, six, 6,000? 6, 7,500. Yeah. And so could this been all a plan like, well, I'm going to have to, like, he was thinking bankruptcy think e before this. That's exactly what I'm saying. I think Elon yeah. is quiet quitting Twitter. He's quiet quitting Twitter. I mean, I think that's what's happening. Well, what I think happens we're watching to it happen finances. in real time. How does he get? How does he get out of this? What happens to his finances? We're, we're watching. Well, what, what are you thinking? Well, no, so what are the assets? <laughs> Listen, Twitter. So again, let's stop for a moment. And like, forget about all the insanity that's happened. If Twitter were to go away tomorrow, it, Twitter is not general purpose technology, right? Like nope. um, electricity. We, the only way to calc. What's the total valuation of the internet? There's no way to calculate it, but for in the reverse, right? That's a general purpose technology. That is not Twitter. Twitter goes away tomorrow. There's no meaningful economic impact. There might be on the companies that are solely set up to serve Twitter and anybody who's using OAuth, you know, and using Twitter to sign on, there might be hiccups. Twitter goes away tomorrow. There's no there's no real problem. There's no real infrastructure. The user base isn't all that um, valuable because it's relatively small, right? So again, who, who would buy it? Who? How do you monetize it? it, it does, there's no... There's no that's a, that's a good point. There's a saving. lot of other services that would cause major disruption. That's a good point. Yeah, it's not the power grid, for crying out loud. Um, no, but you think of things like Salesforce or Oracle, if they yeah. went down. like, yeah. Well, that would cause some serious disruption. He can't sell right. it. Or Nobody's going to buy it, even for a billion dollars at this point, right? He's really now, now, years and years ago, I was talking to, I was wasting my breath on um, some news organizations and saying, there's no way that this is going to monetize in the long run because the like there's no model that I saw really working. So news org should buy it, turn it into a 21st century wire service, I love it. Um, allow people to use it as we currently do, but police some of the, you know, the, the bots and other things and, you know, control more of the advertising destiny. Like but there, nobody would, cons you know, collaborate to do that. So I, I don't know. That's by the way, the people who are not moving off of Twitter include all the news services they really uh although reuters now has a uh, a mastodon feed but i think the news services don't have anything they anywhere they can go like twitter oh but they'll always be somewhere where people want to spout something off and release information no but i'll tell you because we work with we work with some of them and some others and i know that there was a meeting among the largest foundations on um, whether or not they should all leave twitter or stay on you know Mm. Well, you got to, it's like, you got to stay where the news is breaking. You just have to, that's your job as being news. Like when people complained about, you know, reporting on our president, I'm like, well, he's the president. You got to kind of report on that. So it's kind of the job of news to where the news is breaking or where you can get that information. You have to gather it. So a it's few like organizations, super unique. They didn't really own any IP that can't be replicated. They had a couple of patents for machine learning. They had a couple of patents for interconnected networks, but those those were just utility patents. They weren't what they have that you now are, are are members. That is their exactly. asset. Exactly. The, the user base was the members, and he drove them away. 
I mean, remember, well, they're not all like, gone yet. Some have left. There's still plenty. But of the people important on ones. You have to remember, you. everyone looks at the 1.3 billion users of Twitter, and they say that's the big number. So even if a million left, it's not really that big of a problem. But you look at uh, the revenue of Twitter, 92% came from advertisers. Of that 92% that came from advertisers, 50 to, 50 to 60% came from the United States, content developed in the United States. So in the United States, you had about 38 million active daily users. 25% of those, or about 9 million, generated the content of about 97% of that. So 9 million users in the United States are responsible for roughly three quarters of Twitter's revenue. So if he's driven away a million of those, that is a huge hit. That the, is uncoverable. The latest Mastodon number is uh, the last week they've grown to one and a half million users. So yep. I presume most of them came from Twitter. Um, well, they're definitely getting plenty of buzz. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Mastodon is not a Twitter replacement. Uh, it's not. And it shouldn't be. Uh, it's designed to kind of avoid some of the pitfalls Twitter uh, offers, especially to uh, disadvantaged people, people uh, uh, in the LBG2Q plus uh, community. Um, they left Twitter a long time ago, frankly. Um, because Twitter has always been kind of last last five years been a toxic place. Um, so it's really so. Are we going to mourn the loss of Twitter, Father? Yeah. <laughs> I, I, okay. I my experience of Twitter was a lot different than some others because very early on I wrote a bot that got rid of the worst signals from Twitter, and it was very good at it. It made Twitter a very useful place for me, and it still it still is. Uh, and yes, I'm on Macedon. Yes, I'm trying out a couple of other social media services. Uh, but Twitter was actually useful for me. It wasn't just a place to broadcast thoughts. I got some very interesting ideas from the people that I met in the communities that I formed within Twitter. So that is a unique forum that I do not think is duplicatable anywhere else on, a, on an existing Internet property. Hmm. I agree. And um, I, you know, I've used Twitter Again, like I was since like 2006 and uh, along the way. So early on, that's where my friends were. And it was, you know, fun to have conversations in public, I guess. But I was there for the links people were sharing pre-political, you know, mire. Um, and Jonathan Abrams, who I really respect, is always slightly ahead, slightly too ahead of the curve. Um, he founded Friendster. He also started mm -hmm. something called Nuzzle and UZZEL, which was this awesome app that uh, you could set up. If you had Twitter lists, um, once a certain threshold of people posted, accounts posted the same link, you would get a notification. So it was this really, really great way. I, I made like 200 private Twitter lists that were each about a specific topic. It was a really great way to surface totally original signals that I just would not have picked up on my own. Actually, then Twitter bought it and turned it into blue and dumbed it down and made it terrible. But, right. um, and you know, I, I, I use Twitter to present. I used to, I used to have the script running in, in, um, keynote and I would, anytime I gave a keynote presentation somewhere, I would, uh, sort of have a back channel of me talking while I was talking on stage and it would tweet out the links. Um, you know, I just, I would like try to think ahead of what somebody might stop when I was talking to look up on their own and I would tweet it while I was saying it. Um, you know, it's the, it's, it's like those other utilities that I, I really, I really miss. And I, I miss, yeah, it, it, it's a different place than it was and I'm sort of ready to let it go. Um, black Twitter. A perfect example of a community that uh, formed on Twitter that gave people voices that didn't have voices before the mm -hmm. Arab Spring. Um, there are lots of historic things that happened on Twitter. So, I mean, I think it's appropriate. Are, are we premature to mourn it? I, I no. think there's a giant dump fest going on right now on Twitter. That's what I'm hearing. Um, what do you mean by dump fest? There's a, I'm watching the feed here and I'm listening to you. I think there's a lot of people trashing it. A lot of people spend many, many years building up their community and their audience. Yeah. And right now there's one guy who's acting very aggressively and he owns it. Uh, I say we should all chill out. Just and stick around and see what happens. That was my original plan until I was kind of force fed Elon's tweets. 
Uh, and I thought yeah, you oh, can always just, cannot stop following. I can um, I could block. What, so what happened? You just you had not you didn't have the chronological view on. Yeah, I had the, the home feed on, and I had oh, okay. like eight right. Elon Musk tweets in a row, yeah. all of which were worse and worse and worse. Uh, he's by the way stopped doing that. Uh, I think he probably got the message that probably is counterproductive. Let's see what is. I mean, these things. Listen, I think all of this thing. I'm a futurist, but we we look backwards twice as much as we look forwards, and I I you know we sort of go in cycles of things. So you know we've got social media that are kind of imploding. I think I think we're in a period of social distortion where we're sort of spreading out again and going into different directions. But at some point, years down the line, there will be consolidation again. So the Mastodon may be de decentralized, but there will still be a consolidation of players in the market as there is with every single industry over and over again. So it's interesting, yeah. by I, the I, way. I said in the pre-show, I said in the pre-show that I'm going to be slim pickings right in this bomb into the ground. I mean, I, 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 like David said, I spent years building up a community that I find very valuable on Twitter. And so I'm going to stay there if for nothing else, but for them. Was that but a strange love reference? At the same time, reference? I am moving to Mastodon. Yes. I'm so, sorry? Was that a strange love reference? Yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> Got to throw one of yeah, those. Yeah, remember Slim Pickens riding the uh, Tommy? Yeah, Hoffman? no, no, no. It's my favorite movie. I just, I, was, I loved hearing that part. <laughs> so much that I interrupted okay. you. I apologize. Wait, it, it, just, I mean, there is there is a, an, an interesting tangent to this. Did, you, you heard about the, uh, the senior director of engineering uh, got caught uh, sending out a slack that is just tone deaf? No. Do tell. Uh, so it, uh, Luke si uh, Simon, Luke Evan Simon, he is the uh, senior director of engineering at Twitter, sent out a Slack saying, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to quote this, this is going to be the challenge. The engineers I am bringing back, the ones he hi fired and then rehired, are weak, lazy, unmotivated, and they may even be against an Elon Twitter. They were cut for a reason. So we need to think of these people as just needing to be around until the knowledge transition is completed. Imagine sending that out on a company Slack to the people who are going to read it and say, yeah, I, I'm going to be as slow as possible. I'm, I'm not motivated right, to work for you. So wait a second. Let's let's pause for a moment on that. So that really went out, yes? That really went out. That really okay. went out. He has, so he has and now you bring made those employees private. back and you called them lazy. Yep. Was that I, posturing, though? Those just employees, half of those employees are going to design backdoors into their software so they can hack it later when they're dumped yeah. again. Well, oh, uh, if, if I was employed, up a Pandora's box of problems. <laughs> if I was brought back, I am writing ten lines of code where one will do. I mean, come on, I will go as slow as possible. I will milk it for every bit of salary and and concessions that I can no, it's get. More of like I'm going to build a back door so I can get into this thing yeah. when I want to. Yeah. So yeah. it's uh, <laughs> um, they some of them I I I understand have to come back because they weren't. They were, in order to avoid the Warren Act, Elon, who originally wanted just to fire him without severance, no notice, realized he had to give him uh, 90 days of continued salary. Those people are still getting paid. And so it's easy to call them back because they never really <laughs> left. And if they don't come back, then you can say, well, then you're not getting your 90 days. Now you've quit. So you might wonder, well, why would anybody come back after being fired? Well, that's why. Uh, they may no, not. But this goes to my point: Who could dump half of their staff right. and still be operational? Yeah, and then he, did. he goes, no. "Wait a second, I can't still be." Yeah, dump them five days after you back. walk in the door. How do, would you even know? And certainly, as you point out, counting the number of pages of code committed is a terrible way to do it. <laughs> uh, Can I ask you guys a question? Yeah. Have Have any of you had conversations about Elon with others and uh, gotten into? had bad react. Let me put it this way. I feel like Elon's almost religion on his, on his own and there's no room. I mean, two things get people more upset than, than anything else. And that is their like crypto and Elon, you know, you, right. you, these are our two big stories. Yeah, I know. But like the, the reaction that people have to any, any critical, any critic, like logical criticism of what's happening right now is, you know, grounds for, you know, verbal assault. But, I don't but, know. But there's, 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 there's a Venn diagram here. Sorry, Padre? Uh, so, so there's a Venn diagram here of the block bot. You have the Elon stands, you have the crypto stands, and then you have the Joe Rogan stands. Mm. And where <laughs> they meet, that little velvet part right in the middle, that's an instant block. That's just no, I, I'm sorry, I, I, I don't want to pay attention bot, to anything. Is that how your say. bot works? <laughs>
Don't miss All About Android every week. We talk about the latest news, hardware, apps, and now all the developer goodness happening in the Android ecosystem. I'm Jason Howell, also joined by Ron Richards, Florence Ion, and our newest co-host on the panel, Wen Tu Dao, who brings her developer chops. Really great stuff. We also invite people from all over the Android ecosystem to talk about this mobile platform we love so much. Join us every Tuesday, All About Android, on twit.tv.